What's up, pretty gang? It's your favorite nail tech, Peaches. We're back with another video. You guys, I am super obsessed with this set. It was really easy, super beginner friendly. My client wanted to go short for the first time since I've been doing her nails in a year. She didn't know what to do, so I was like, girl, let me hook you up. And this is what I came up with. Um, so, of course, we are using a not polished color because if it's not polished, it's not nothing, never will be. Princess slippers. So, we're going to go ahead and do the subscriber shout out before we really get into this look. And it goes to Forevermore which I'm pretty sure is my client's daughter, who is now my client. So, I mean, that's kind of dope. So, shout out to you if this is the correct forever, okay? You guys already know. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications, because if your notifications is off, how the hell you gonna know what I'm on? Okay. So, look. I pretty much sped right through this application. You guys see me do application all the time, but I did want to go ahead and include some application in this video. Uh, I recently did a video that was showing like a two bead application method for shorter nails. It would work perfectly for nails this length and shorter or for people who have smaller nails and you're just trying to get done a little faster. Um, so go ahead and check that out. You guys, I'm sorry. It is before 7 a.m. in the morning. So I'm kind of stuttering over my words because I'm tired. I edited this video like around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So if it sounds like I can't talk, it's because I really can't. So I'm just going to throw that out there. So you guys should already know, prepped and primed with Young Nails. Uh, what's that What's that called? Um, <laughs> come on now. Protein Bond, okay? Because y'all know I'm a Young Nails girl through and through, okay? So Protein Bond is what I used before I went ahead and started applying my acrylic okay this is slightly sped up this whole video is slightly sped up to an extent i know you guys say that you like longer videos but y'all know listen i'm not home and y'all know that's where i got the best wi-fi and where to upload the fastest so i really was not trying to make a 35 minute video because i feel like that was gonna take me forever to upload so here we are 26 minutes and i feel like this is gonna show you guys a very detailed look at how i went ahead and got this set now we're gonna go ahead and say this set is beginner friendly, okay, because this design looks way more intricate than what it is. I honestly promise you, when people don't know what to do or they're trying to step out out of the box or they're new to nail art, I will do designs like this because first of all, it's really cute and it ends up being kind of, depending on the colors, it could be either very girly or, you know, it could be very fun. It just, you can make the vibe that you're going for based off of the colors the placement all that good stuff okay and those who know me know look i used to not do nail art and these squiggle lines like months ago was some of the first nail art that i was learning and how i kind of figure out how to manipulate my brush but at first i was not messing with it i was not rocking with it and now i honestly really love it so just don't be afraid to kind of like take other people's line art ideas and make it your own because there's so many ways to do squiggle lines, but I haven't seen too many people do it this way. This is my favorite way to do it. Just one day I was kind of playing around with stuff, messing around. I was like, I think I like this, okay? So I did not show any filing, anything like that. We're just sticking to application. I will show you a, a small video clip of what it looks like after I'm done with filing and all that stuff just so that way you guys could see just like a clear glimpse of the nails before we um, go ahead and start with the nail art. So here it is any second, any second. And then we're gonna go ahead and get into the actual nail art design. And when I say it's easy, okay, here we go. Here is the clip of the nails. But when I say it's easy, I mean as far as like difficulty for this design okay so I top coat before I do any nail art because I just feel like it glides better I feel like if you make a mistake and need to use acetone it's not gonna melt the color into the cracks of um, the acetone I mean uh, the cracks of the nail because even though you buff there still is some areas where there's some scratches and acetone will melt the color into those scratches and it just makes it harder to get out okay so these type of squiggle lines right i just kind of go as i please i tend to like squiggles that go in opposite directions that really 
are for real abstract honestly and the great thing about this is there is not a real rhyme or reason you just have to work on your placement okay so I'm gonna do three lines each because I feel like that's what fits the nail best without being overcrowded for what design I'm gonna do since I am actually adding little accent lines and I tend to like thick lines now that's another reason why I say this design is easy for beginners because if you mess up look what I'm finna do if you feel like it's a little too thick look what you can do get you a cleanup brush or whatever and some acetone make it how you like it boom bam okay so this is really just about placement okay when you do lines like this you just need to recognize which direction does this design look like it flows and then also which um area of the nail do you want to take up and when you do something like this you have to be thinking ahead to the future because i kind of at first i didn't know if i was going to do more lines than this but as soon as i got into the second or third i was like yeah i most definitely am because it's going to look heck of cute okay so you just have to learn you just have to find a nail art brush a line brush that you actually really like because that's when i started to actually like nail art y'all know this is my go-to brush um, i got off amazon in a pack of other brushes um i think it's the beatles brand i use their gel polishes on toes as well if you're familiar with them that's the same brand and this particular brush i don't like working with very long brushes and i don't like working with very short brushes this brush is not too thick but it's also not too like long or short and when you press on it and when you load it with polish and pressure on it there's a certain point to where it's kind of feeling like a paintbrush like it widens out so it's it's just super easy to use and I recommend a brush like that for someone who is beginning because the long striper brush it just don't do it for me okay so like I said if you make a mistake you could take your cleanup brush and some acetone and you can go ahead and clean it up very easily now I like the look of thicker lines and I feel like that's what gives it this super abstract look i know generally when people do um nail art like this they kind of have a more of a thinner thickness to each their own that's what i'm saying like how is someone gonna know you messed up unless you really told them you know what i'm saying and i mean it's it's super abstract i tend to try and like to make the lines not all look the same so as long as there's some type of curvature from usually a, a good rule of thumb is like something in the middle, something towards the bottom, something towards the top. So that way you can kind of have an even balance. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't like something, I'm gonna keep saying it. Erase it, erase it. Now I would say when you're doing designs like these, try not to make all the lines flow in the same direction like you seen how before I switched this line it kind of looked like the line on the bottom and they kind of were similar to each other I would say try and stay away from that and then um, on the second hand it uh, it it can be a, a little bit more difficult to decide what direction of lines uh, uh, to do so just go ahead and decide you want something that's similar to the other hand but not the same so I'm just basically thinking like okay what directions have I not gone in for real and then I want to make sure that these lines on this nail do not mimic each other because I know sometimes that happens to me where I'm just mindless mindlessly doing something and I'm like oh these lines look the same exact way on this nail and that's not what we want we want something with dimension with depth y'all know I'm big on that and I, I just like things to just look put together and nice, which is why these type of designs, it's super great for people who want to try something outside the box, but they just don't know what to do. So once again, we're going to start boom, boom, see how this one I'm like, okay, we got a line that's like in the middle, some type of way. We're going to do something that's probably more towards the top. And I'm pretty sure we're going to do something that's towards the bottom. And you see, every nail is different. And that's the great part about it. Nothing has to mimic, be perfect, any of that. You just need the overall look to be the same and to flow. Okay. Now, you see how, because I've top coated, when I do erase any mistakes, it comes right off. 
I noticed a lot of people do not top coat and they might have complaints about oh my nail art it's, it's got a bumpy or it's not as pigmented or etc etc top coat first it changed the game for me honestly because I was trying to do it how other people did you know top coat after it makes for like a lot of layers and stuff of top coat sometimes depending on the design but honestly it's worth it because you see how it just glides oh this polish you saw it this polish is I think it's did it say jealous I honestly I can't remember I got two white polishes in both brands start with a G yeah it's jealous the other one is Jelixir, but I don't really use that one for nail art um, just just don't use something that's too thick use something that's easy to glide on um the young nails mission control is good as well but for this particular design i just did not feel like going into a dipping pot when this was um on hand a little bit closer to me so just think of an s and as you practice you will get the hang of which direction you need to uh, move your hands and things like that that was my biggest downfall in the beginning I could not figure out how to manipulate the brushes it wasn't until I found a brush that I actually really liked that it was easier for me to manipulate I know some people they can only work with super long striper brushes they can't work with short brushes some people work with extremely small brushes you got to just find the brush for you okay it's all personal preference and practice when I was first doing designs like these the lines were a little bit more wobbly you know I, like trying to get them pigmented it it definitely helps to have certain go-to products that you actually really like that are really gonna pull everything together okay so we're over here on the thumbnail and we're just pulling everything together now if you're a beginner cure between every like two one to two nails cure it for like 10 seconds because the mistake I used to do is that I would uh, wipe off the um, wipe off the design on accident and that used to really frustrate me especially because I was new don't try and just let me just do all five fingers at once take your time if you need to clients are understanding that designs like these take time okay so it's fine so here we go we're starting with this second group of lines and upon doing these ones right it's pretty mindless I'm just filling up some negative space okay I'm taking uh, loading my brush with polish taking my brush and just mi like tracing some of the lines in different areas just to take up the negative space I feel like this just gives it a little extra something something okay so at this point she nor okay well not at this point but normally my client we bling her the hell out often when she does come and so she was like dang this is crazy i'm not gonna have that much bling so at this point like i already knew like by this point i should say i already knew i was gonna add some bling i just was like okay in what aspect am i gonna do this so once i kind of did this right i was like okay after i put these lines on i think i'm going to add bling to the rest of the negative spaces so you can see like once we start to add um some of these lines and you don't need to make it to where like every little piece of the backdrop is covered it's just filling up some negative space we do want to keep some areas of um the background showing just because you know you don't want it to look too crowded there's a thin line between too much and oh that design is just right you know what i'm saying so it's a good rule of thumb whatever first nail i start i'll usually test out like okay how do i want to do like two do i want to do three and i think four was like the magic number for this particular set so you just kind of have to play with it and in different um i think this one had five in different oh okay in different areas of the nail you will be able to see like okay this one looks best this looks best i personally feel like i have an eye for placement and design and things like that so for me it's pretty mindless okay but for others i understand if you are having a hard time with placement it can be a little bit frustrating like dang where do i put it how do i do it you have to kind of rely on your own instinct 
some people do not have the same type of eye for placement or they may not just be as creative or like their thinking is a little differently so what you need to do if that's you if you think in your brain like you're not as creative or certain things design wise and certain elements is harder for you then what i would say is just relax maybe you need a little bit of a reference picture which is fine i personally don't really care about reference pictures because you know i just i i have stuff already in my brain but you can grab a reference picture just to see like okay i like this placement type of thing um you can just stop think like okay do a test nail if i do this on this nail how does it come out because guess what if you don't like something you can erase it and you can change it okay so listen to my words if you don't like something you can erase it and you can change it which is why we don't hear everything quickly all at once you gotta look at it look at each nail you see what i'm saying if you're new and you do have to cure between every couple of nails just look at those two nails together and think does does this look like what i want it to look like okay so just stop take some time to to um look at the overall design and the overall placement before you cure and see what's going on with that and that's the best advice that i have for you but you can see the design itself is not complicated very easy very easy so at this point we are just about done and i am going to show you guys how i do some of this bling so that way you guys can see like well i like to do bling not on top of top coat so this is going to show you guys how do i do it when there is top coat okay and i feel like that's going to give you guys a good look at how i get around stuff like that so when we're done with one hand we're going to let it cure for 60 seconds and then we are going to top coat you got a top coat on top of this um because you don't want anything sticking to it okay so here we go everything is top coated so when i want to when i want to add bling on top of nails that are already top coated this is what i do i will take my e-file or take a regular file and i will in the whatever specific area that i want to have the bling i will go ahead and file away some top coat not too much or too fast because let's say if i wanted to put some bling where some of that white is if i went too fast what would happen is that i might accidentally file through my design so i don't want to file through my design so this is how we're gonna um do it okay so i just chose selective areas that i'm like okay i'm pretty sure i want bling in this area so this is where i'm going to top coat at well not top coat erase the top coat okay once again i did top coat over the white lines because i don't want any dust sticking to that because even though i top coated i mean not top coated even though i did cure the white if i didn't top coat before doing this dust could possibly stick and that's not what you want because it's going to be you're not going to be able to get it off very easily at all okay so I'm gonna use my Mia Secret glue, of course. And I have some glue activator spray that I recently got again. I used to use this all the time back in school when I used to use too much glue. But I just use a little bit, like literally a drop because these crystals are so small. Um, I don't need to go around them hecka because when I top coat, it's gonna like seal them some more. And I'll spray it just to keep it from sliding around because even though I did top coat it, I mean, even though I got rid of the top coat, the crystals are still gonna want to slide because it's not extremely um it's not extremely what do they call that like the surface is not rough it's still a little smooth it's not as rough as what it needs to be so i have to go ahead and do it this way 
and then when I use a glue activator basically that spray some people use glue dry spray um, when you use the spray it sprays it in place so it stops moving around and I couldn't remember why I stopped buying this to be honest with you I guess I just feel like oh da, da, da. but then like recently I'm like I kind of need it for some things so I just end up buying it again but yeah this is really good I don't use it for all bling or anything but this is really good for something like this and then I will show you guys how I top coat in the next clip how I top coat around stuff because I do have to top coat again so when it comes to nail art and stuff you do just have to have patience because everything with nails is, is layers is steps you, that's why you do have to have patience because something like this you can get flustered you can hinder the process and then if you have another client coming up you know it can be stressful that's why you just practice 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 don't be scared to just you got to try something new on clients and that's fine most of the time if your clients are school they're going to be with it especially if they're looking for something new something different you know so i just took a couple of crystals at a time and glued them down some areas have one some areas have two i think some areas even have three but i knew that this is what i was going for just to give her some bling because she is used to having bling all the time okay and then just to give you guys a price point i think sometimes i, I will share the price i don't like charge out the ass or anything like that but i'm pretty sure this particular set ran her like 100 or 105 something like that she did have multiple services done because we did a fill on her toes so um because you, you guys know i do acrylic toes so we did a fill on her toes and we did this so i want to say all in all she probably paid like 115 and she paid a 20 dollar deposit so in total every both services was probably like 130 something so yeah i do want to say she definitely paid 100 at least for these um which she's like that's what she's normally used to paying actually more because she normally gets xl nails but this particular time she just decided she wanted to see how short was treating her okay so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video um i'm saying this now because once we get into the clips of top coat and then i'm going to show you how to make the nails crisp again you know uh, I want to be able to explain that, but yeah, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you guys say that you enjoy longer videos, so hopefully this video wasn't too long for you. I just really wanted to go in depth in explaining on why I say this type of design is beginner friendly, even though it doesn't look like it, it really is. The line art is very simple and it's pretty much up to you, like your execution is going to decide, you know, what it looks like of course, but the design itself is very simple very very good to have in your back pocket when you don't know what to do and it's something that it's not one time that i have done this that somebody didn't like it okay so uh yeah really hope this type of video is something that you guys are interested in it's more focused on design and not application so here we go when i top coat stuff like this i go ahead and top coat if it gets on the crystals guess what i do take my finger and wipe it off okay but you gotta you gotta seal around all these crystals you don't want them to pop off okay so you gotta seal one more time i know it's a hassle i know it's annoying but you have to or maybe you don't but i have to okay see how i just wipe off any of the stuff on the bling it's so easy you guys and then after this i am gonna show you guys how i um go ahead and use my e-file and my regular file to go ahead and make the nails what I feel sharp again because after so many layers of top coat and stuff sometimes it can you know dull the corners a little bit you know what I'm saying so before we go ahead and do that make sure you guys go ahead and comment like subscribe turn your notifications on because you guys know I try to upload daily okay when technology is on my side and here we go I'm gonna show you guys really quick before before we go see this I go ahead 
take my e-file enhance the c-curve again boom make sure nothing's too thick and just get everything to be crisp again i do this after i do a lot of nail art and then i take my file and make sure everything is crisp and straight now this is not taking away from the length as you will see okay this is just making sure everything is nice and crisp again so once again hope you guys enjoyed this video the final look is going to show very soon i appreciate you guys we hit 800 subscribers the other day we passed 800 subscribers that very same day and i mean i'm just excited you guys we're so close to 1k we so close tell somebody about my channel anybody okay and here go the final look and of course i will see you guys in the next video because peach is the greatest tech in the universe yeah you made it this time <laughs>